Hadith 160 Narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A believer is not stung twice, by something, out of one and the same whole. Hadith 161 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, entered upon me and said, Have I not been informed that you offer prayer all the night and fast the whole day? I said, Yes. He said, Do not do so. Offer prayer at night and also sleep, fast for a few days and give up fasting for a few days, because your body has a right on you, and your eye has a right on you, and your guest has a right on you, and your wife has a right on you. I hope that you will have a long life, and it is sufficient for you to fast for three days a month as the reward of a good deed is multiplied ten times, that means, as if you fasted the whole year. I insisted, on fasting more, so I was given a hard instruction. I said, I can do more than that, fasting. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, fast three days every week. But as I insisted, on fasting more, so I was burdened. I said, I can fast more than that. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, fast as Allah's Prophet David used to fast. I said, How was the fasting of the Prophet David? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, One half of a year, that is, he used to fast on alternate days. Hadith 162 Narrated Abu Shuraih al Kaabi, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should serve his guest generously. The guest's reward is, to provide him with a superior type of food for a night and a day and a guest is to be entertained with food for three days, and whatever is offered beyond that, is regarded as something given in charity. And it is not lawful for a guest to stay with his host for such a long period so as to put him in a critical position. Narrated Malik, similarly as above, adding, who believes in Allah and the last day should talk what is good or keep quiet, that is, abstain from dirty and evil talk, and should think before uttering. Hadith 163 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should not hurt his neighbor, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should serve his guest generously, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak what is good or keep silent. Hadith 164 Narrated Uqbah bin Amr, we said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. You send us out and it happens that we have to stay with such people as do not entertain us. What do you think about it? Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said to us, If you stay with some people and they entertain you as they should for a guest, accept it, but if they do not do then you should take from them the right of the guest which they ought to give. Hadith 165 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should serve his guest generously, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should unite the bond of kinship, that is, keep good relation with his kith and kin, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should talk what is good or keep quiet. Hadith 166 Narrated Abu Juhaifa, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, established a bond of brotherhood between Sulman and Abu Darda. Sulman paid a visit to Abu ad Darda and found Umm ad Darda dressed in shabby clothes and asked her why she was in that state. She replied, Your brother, Abu ad Darda, is not interested in the luxuries of this world. In the meantime, Abu ad Darda came and prepared a meal for him, Sulman and said to him, Please, eat for I am fasting. Sulman said, I am not going to eat, unless you eat. So Abu ad darda ate. When it was night, Abu ad darda got up, for the night prayer. Sulman said, to him, Sleep, and he slept. Again Abu ad darda got up, for the prayer, and Sulman said, to him, Sleep. When it was the last part of the night, Sulman said to him, Get up now, for the prayer. 
So both of them offered their prayers and Sulman said to Abu ad darda Your Lord has a right on you, and your soul has a right on you, and your family has a right on you, so you should give the rights of all those who have a right on you. Later on Abu ad darda visited the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and mentioned that to him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Sulman has spoken the truth. Hadith 167 Narrated Abdur Rahman bin Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr invited a group of people and told me, look after your guests. Abu Bakr added, I am going to visit the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and you should finish serving them before I return. Abdur Rahman said, so I went at once and served them with what was available at that time in the house and requested them to eat. They said, where is the owner of the house, that is, Abu Bakr? Abdur Rahman said, Take your meal. They said, We will not eat till the owner of the house comes. Abdur Rahman said, Accept your meal from us, for if my father comes and finds you not having taken your meal yet, we will be blamed severely by him, but they refused to take their meals. So I was sure that my father would be angry with me. When he came, I went away, to hide myself, from him. He asked, What have you done, about the guests? They informed him the whole story. Abu Bakr called, O oh Abdur Rahman. I kept quiet. He then called again, O oh Abdur Rahman. I kept quiet and he called again, O oh ignorant, boy. I beseech you by Allah, if you hear my voice, then come out. I came out and said, Please ask your guests, and do not be angry with me. They said, He has told the truth he brought the meal to us. He said, As you have been waiting for me, by Allah, I will not eat of it tonight. They said, By Allah, we will not eat of it till you eat of it. He said, I have never seen a night like this night in evil. What is wrong with you? Why don't you accept your meals of hospitality from us? He said to me, Bring your meal. I brought it to him, and he put his hand in it, saying, in the name of Allah. The first, state of fury, was because of Satan. So Abu Bakr ate and so did his guests. Hadith 168 Narrated Abdur Rahman bin Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr came with a guest or some guests, but he stayed late at night with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and when he came, my mother said, to him, Have you been detained from your guest or guests tonight? He said, Haven't you served the supper to them? She replied, We presented the meal to him, or to them, but he, or they, refused to eat. Abu Bakr became angry, rebuked me and invoked Allah to cause, my, ears to be cut and swore not to eat of it. I hid myself, and he called me, O oh ignorant, boy. Abu Bakr's wife swore that she would not eat of it and so the guests or the guests swore that they would not eat of it till he ate of it. Abu Bakr said, all that happened was from Satan. So he asked for the meals and ate of it, and so did they. Whenever they took a handful of the meal, the meal grew, increased, from underneath more than that mouthful. He said, to his wife, O, oh, sister of Bunny Firas. What is this? She said, O, oh, pleasure of my eyes. The meal is now more than it had been before we started eating. So they ate of it and sent the rest of that meal to the Prophet. It is said that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, also ate of it. Hadith 169 Narrated Rafi bin Khadij and Sahul bin Abu Huthma, Abdullah bin Sahul and Muhayyisah bin Masud went to Kaibar and they dispersed in the gardens of the date palm trees. Abdullah bin Sahul was murdered. Then Abdur Rahman bin Sahul, Huwayyisa and Muhayyisa, the two sons of Masud, came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and spoke about the case of their, murdered, friend. Abdur Rahman who was the youngest of them all, started talking. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Let the older, among you, speak first. So they spoke about the case of their, murdered, friend. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, 
said, Will fifty of you take an oath whereby you will have the right to receive the blood money of your murdered man, or said, Your companion? They said, O Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. The murder was a thing we did not witness. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Then the Jews will release you from the oath, if fifty of them, the Jews, should take an oath to contradict your claim. They said, O Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. They are disbelievers, and they will take a false oath. Then Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, himself paid the blood money to them. Hadith 170 Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Inform me of a tree which resembles a Muslim, giving its fruits at every season by the permission of its Lord, and the leaves of which do not fall. I thought of the date palm tree, but I disliked to speak because Abu Bakr and Umar were present there. When nobody spoke, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, It is the date palm tree. When I came out with my father, I said, O oh father! It came to my mind that it was the date palm tree. He said, What prevented you from saying it? Had you said it, it would have been more dearer to me than such and such a thing, fortune. I said, Nothing prevented me but the fact that neither you nor Abu Bakr spoke, so I dislike to speak, in your presence. Hadith 171 Narrated Ubay bin Kaab, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Some poetry contains wisdom. Hadith 172 Narrated Jundub, while the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was walking, a stone hit his foot and stumbled and his toe was injured. He then, quoting a poetic verse, said, You are not more than a toe which has been bathed in blood in Allah's cause. Hadith 173 Narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The most true words said by a poet were the words of Labid. He said, Verily, everything except Allah is perishable. And Umayyah bin Abi us Sult was about to embrace Islam. Hadith 174 Narrated Salamah bin al aqwa We went out with Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, to Kaibar and we traveled during the night. A man amongst the people said to Amir bin al aqwa Won't you let us hear your poetry? Amir was a poet, and so he got down and started, chanting Huda, reciting for the people, poetry that kept pace with the camel's footsteps, saying, O oh Allah! Without you we would not have been guided on the right path, neither would we have given in charity, nor would we have prayed. So please forgive us what we have committed. Let all of us be sacrificed for your cause and when we meet our enemy, make our feet firm and bestow peace and calmness on us and if they, our enemy, will call us towards an unjust thing we will refuse. The infidels have made a hue and cry to ask others help against us. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Who is that driver, of the camels? They said, He is Amr bin al aqwa he said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him. A man among the people said, Has martyrdom been granted to him, O Allah's Prophet? Would that you let us enjoy his company longer. We reached, the people of, Kaibar and besieged them till we were stricken with severe hunger but Allah helped the Muslims conquer Kaibar. In the evening of its conquest the people made many fires. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, what are those fires? For what are you making fires? They said, For cooking meat. He asked, What kind of meat? They said, Donkey's meat. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Throw away the meat and break the cooking pots. A man said, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Shall we throw away the meat and wash the cooking pots? He said, you can do that too. When the army files aligned in rows, for the battle, Amr's sword was a short one, and while attacking a Jew with it in order to hit him, the sharp edge of the sword turned back and hit Amr's knee and caused him to die. When the Muslims returned, from the battle, 
Salamah said, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saw me pale and said, What is wrong with you? I said, Let my parents be sacrificed for you. The people claim that all the deeds of Amr have been annulled. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, Who said so? I replied, So and so and so and so, and Usaid bin al Hudayr al Ansari. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever says so is telling a lie. Verily, Amr will have double reward. While speaking, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, put two of his fingers together to indicate that, and added, he was really a hard-working man and a mujahid, devout fighter in Allah's cause, and rarely have there lived in it, that is, Medina or the battlefield, an Arab like him. Hadith 175 Narrated on us bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came to some of his wives among whom there was Umm Sulaim, and said, May Allah be merciful to you, O Anjushah. Drive the camels slowly, as they are carrying glass vessels. Abu Kalaba said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said a sentence, that is, the above metaphor, which, had any one of you said it, you would have admonished him for it. Hadith 176 Narrated Aisha, Hassan bin Thabit asked the permission of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, to lampoon the pagans, in verse. Allah's Apostle said, What about my forefathers, ancestry? Hassan said, To the Prophet, I will take you out of them as a hare is taken out of dough. Narrated Hisham bin Urwa that his father said, I called Hassan with bad names in front of Aisha. She said, Don't call him with bad names because he used to defend Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, against the pagans. Hadith 177 Narrated al Haytham bin Abu Sinan, that he heard Abu Hurairah in his narration, mentioning that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A Muslim brother of yours who does not say dirty words, and by that he meant Ibn Rawaha, said, in verse, We have Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, with us who recites the Holy Quran in the early morning time. He gave us guidance and light while we were blind and astray, so our hearts are sure that whatever he says will certainly happen. He does not touch his bed at night, being busy in worshipping Allah while the pagans are sound asleep in their beds. Hadith 178 Narrated Abu Salamah bin Abdur Rahman bin Auf, that he heard Hassan bin Thabit al-Ansari asking the witness of Abu Huraira, saying, O Abu Huraira, I beseech you by Allah, to tell me. Did you hear Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, O Hassan? Reply on behalf of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. O Allah! Support him, Hassan, with the Holy Spirit, Gabriel. Abu Huraira said, Yes. Hadith 179 Narrated al bara the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Hassan, Lampoon them, the pagans, in verse, and Gabriel is with you. Hadith 180 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, It is better for a man to fill the inside of his body with pus than to fill it with poetry. Hadith 181 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, it is better for any one of you that the inside of his body be filled with pus which may consume his body, than it be filled with poetry. Hadith 182 Narrated Aisha, Ufla, the brother of Abu al quais asked my permission to enter after the verses of Al-Hijab, veiling the ladies, was revealed, and I said, By Allah, I will not admit him unless I take permission of Allah's apostle, for it was not the brother of al quais who had suckled me but it was the wife of al quais who had suckled me. Then Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, entered upon me, and I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. The man has not nursed me but his wife has nursed me. He said, Admit him because he is your uncle, not from blood relation, but because you have been nursed by his wife, 
Tarabat Yaminuki. Urwa said, because of this reason, Aisha used to say, foster suckling relations render all those things, marriages etc., illegal which are illegal because of the corresponding blood relations. Hadith 183 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, intended to return home after the performance of the Hajj, and he saw Safiyah standing at the entrance of her tent, depressed and sad because she got her menses. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Akra Hulka. An expression used in the Quraysh dialect, you will detain us. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, then asked, her, did you perform the Tawaf ul Afada on the day of sacrifice, 10th of Dhul Hijjah? She said, yes. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, then you can leave, with us. Hadith 184 Narrated Umm Hani, the daughter of Abu Talib, I visited Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, in the year of the conquest of Makkah and found him taking a bath, and his daughter, Fatima was screening him. When I greeted him, he said, Who is it? I replied, I am Umm Hani, the daughter of Abu Talib. He said, Welcome, O Umm Hani. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had finished his bath, he stood up and offered eight rakat of prayer while he was wrapped in a single garment. When he had finished his prayer, I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. My maternal brother assumes, or claims, that he will murder some man whom I have given shelter, that is, so and so bin Hubayra. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Umm Hani. We shelter him whom you have sheltered. Umm Hani added, that happened in the forenoon. Hadith 185 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saw a man driving a badana, a camel for sacrifice, and said, to him, ride it. The man said, it is a badana. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, ride on it. The man said, it is a badana. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, ride on it, woe to you. Hadith 186 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saw a man driving a badana, a camel for sacrifice, and said to him, Ride on it. The man said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. It is a badana. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Ride on it, woe to you, on the second or third time. Hadith 187 Narrated on us bin Malik, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was on a journey and he had a black slave called Anjusha, and he was driving the camels, very fast, and there were women riding on those camels. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Wayhaka, may Allah be merciful to you, O Anjusha. Drive slowly, the camels, with the glass vessels, women. Hadith 188 Narrated Abu Bakra, a man praised another man in front of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said thrice, Woy luka, woe on you. You have cut the neck of your brother. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, added, if it is indispensable for any one of you to praise a person, then he should say, I think that such and such person, is so and so, and Allah is the one who will take his accounts, as he knows his reality, and none can sanctify anybody before Allah, and that only if he knows well about that person. Hadith 189 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, while the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was distributing, wore booty etc., one day, Dul Kuwaisara, a man from the tribe of Bani Tamim, said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Act justly. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Woe to you! Who else would act justly if I did not act justly? Umar said, to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, allow me to chop his neck off. The Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him, said, No, for he has companions, who are apparently so pious that, if any one of, you compares his prayer with, their prayer, he will consider his prayer inferior to theirs, and similarly his fasting inferior to theirs, but they will desert Islam, go out of religion, as an arrow goes through the victim's body, games etc., in which case if its nussle is examined nothing will be seen thereon, and if its nutty is examined, nothing will be seen thereon, and if its kudud is examined, nothing will be seen thereon, for the arrow has gone out too fast even for the excretions and blood to smear over it. Such people will come out at the time of difference among the Muslim people, and the sign by which they will be recognized will be a man whose one of the two hands will look like the breast of a woman or a lump of flesh moving loosely. Abu Sa'id added, I testify that I heard that from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and also testify that I was with Ali when Ali fought against those people. The man described by the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was searched for among the killed, and was found, and he was exactly as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had described him. Hadith 190 Narrated Abu Huraira, a man came to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. I am ruined. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Wayhaka, may Allah be merciful to you. The man said, I have done sexual intercourse with my wife while fasting in Ramadan. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Manumit a slave. The man said, I cannot afford that. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, then fast for two successive months. The man said, I have no power to do so. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, then feed sixty poor persons. The man said, I have nothing, to feed sixty persons. Later, a basket full of dates was brought to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he said, to the man, take it and give it in charity. The man said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Shall I give it to people other than my family? By him in whose hand my life is, there is nobody poorer than me in the whole city of Medina. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, smiled till his premolar teeth became visible, and said, Take it. Az-Zuhri said, that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Waylaka. Hadith 191 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, a Bedouin said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Inform me about the emigration. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Wayhaka, may Allah be merciful to you. The question of emigration is a difficult one. Have you got some camels? The Bedouin said, Yes. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Do you pay their zakat? He said, Yes. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Go on doing like this from beyond the seas, for Allah will not let your deeds go in vain. Hadith 192 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Waylakum, woe to you, or, Waihakum, may Allah be merciful to you, Shu'aba is not sure as to which was the right word, do not become disbelievers after me by cutting the necks of one another. Hadith 193 Narrated on us, a Bedouin came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. When will the hour be established? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Waylaka, woe to you, what have you prepared for it? The Bedouin said, I have not prepared anything for it, except that I love Allah and his Apostle. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You will be with those whom you love. We, the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, And will we too be so? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Yes. So we became very glad on that day. In the meantime, a slave of Ul Mugira passed by, and he was of the same age as I was. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, 
said, If this, slave, should live long, he will not reach the geriatric old age, but the hour will be established. Hadith 194 Narrated Abdullah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Everyone will be with those whom he loves. Hadith 195 Narrated Abdullah bin Masood, a man came to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. What do you say about a man who loves some people but cannot catch up with their good deeds? Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Everyone will be with those whom he loves. Hadith 196 Narrated Abu Musa, it was said to the Prophet, Peace and blessings be upon him, a man may love some people but he cannot catch up with their good deeds? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Everyone will be with those whom he loves. Hadith 197 Narrated Anas bin Malik, a man asked the Prophet, Peace and blessings be upon him, when will the hour be established, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What have you prepared for it? The man said, I haven't prepared for it much of prayers or fast or alms, but I love Allah and his Apostle. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You will be with those whom you love. Hadith 198 Narrated Ibn Abbas, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Ibn Sayyad, I have hidden something for you in my mind, what is it? He said, Ad-Duk. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Iksa. Hadith 199 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Umar bin al-Khattab set out with Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and a group of his companions to Ibn Sayyad. They found him playing with the boys in the fort or near the hillocks of Bani Magala. Ibn Sayyad was nearing his puberty at that time, and he did not notice the arrival of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, till Allah's Apostle stroked him on the back with his hand and said, Do you testify that I am Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? Ibn Sayyad looked at him and said, I testify that you are the Apostle of the unlettered ones, illiterates. Then Ibn Sayyad said to the Prophet, Peace and blessings be upon him, do you testify that I am Allah's Messenger? The Prophet denied that, saying, I believe in Allah and all his Apostles, and then said to Ibn Sayyad, What do you see? Ibn Sayyad said, True people and liars visit me. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You have been confused as to this matter. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, added, I have kept something for you, in my mind. Ibn Sayyad said, Ad-Duk. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Iksa, you should be ashamed, for you cannot cross your limits. Umar said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Allow me to chop off his neck. Allah's Apostle said, to Umar, should this person be him, that is, Ad-Dajjal, then you cannot overpower him, and should he be someone else, then it will be no use your killing him. Abdullah bin Umar added, Later on, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and Ubay bin Qab al-Ansari, once again, went to the garden in which Ibn Sayyad was present. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, entered the garden, he started hiding behind the trunks of the date palms intending to hear something from Ibn Sayyad before the latter could see him. Ibn Sayyad was lying on his bed, covered with a velvet sheet from where his murmurs were heard. Ibn Sayyad's mother saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O Saf, the nickname of Ibn Sayyad. Here is Muhammad. Ibn Sayyad stopped his murmuring. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If his mother had kept quiet, then I would have learnt more about him. Abdullah added, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, stood up before the people, delivering a sermon, and after praising and glorifying Allah as he deserved, he mentioned the Ad-Dajjal saying, I warn you against him, and there has been no prophet but warned his followers against him.
Noah warned his followers against him, but I am telling you about him something which no prophet has told his people of, and that is, know that he is blind in one eye, whereas Allah is not so. Hadith 200 Narrated Ibn Abbas, when the delegation of Abdul Qais came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he said, Welcome, O the delegation who have come. Neither you will have disgrace, nor you will regret. They said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. We are a group from the tribe of our Rabia, and between you and us there is the tribe of Madar and we cannot come to you except in the sacred months. So please order us to do something good, religious deeds, so that we may enter paradise by doing that, and also that we may order our people who are behind us, whom we have left behind at home, to follow it. He said, 4 and 4, offer prayers perfectly, pay the zakat, obligatory charity, fast the month of Ramadan, and give one-fifth of the war booty, in Allah's cause. And do not drink in, containers called, Ad-Dibba, Al-Huntam, Un-Nakir and Al-Mazafat. Hadith 201 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, For every betrayer, perfidious person, a flag will be raised on the day of resurrection, and it will be announced, publicly, this is the betrayal, perfidy, of so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. Hadith 202 Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, a flag will be fixed on the day of resurrection for every betrayer, and it will be announced, publicly in front of everybody, this is the betrayal, perfidy, of so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. Hadith 203 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, None of you should say, Kabuthat nafsi, but he is recommended to say, Lakisat nafsi. Hadith 204 Narrated Sahal, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, None of you should say, Kabuthat nafsi, but he is recommended to say, Lakisat nafsi. Hadith 205 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah said, The offspring of Adam abuse the Dahar, time, and I am the Dahar, in my hands are the night and the day. Hadith 206 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Don't call the grapes ult karm and don't say, Kaibat ad dahri for Allah is the Dahar. Hadith 207 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, They say ul karm the generous, and in fact ul karm is the heart of a believer. Hadith 208 Narrated Ali, I never heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, Let my father and mother be sacrificed for you, except for Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas. I heard him saying, Throw, arrows. Let my father and mother be sacrificed for you. The sub-narrator added, I think that was in the Battle of Uhud. Hadith 209 Narrated Anas bin Malik, that he and Abu Tulha were coming in the company of the Prophet, towards Medina, while Safiya, the Prophet's wife, was riding behind him on his she-camel. After they had covered a portion of the way, suddenly the foot of the she-camel slipped and both the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the woman, that is, his wife, Safiya, fell down. Abu Tulha jumped quickly off his camel and came to the Prophet, saying, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Let Allah sacrifice me for you. Have you received any injury? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No, but take care of the woman, my wife. Abu Tulha covered his face with his garment and went towards her and threw his garment over her. Then the woman got up and Abu Tulha prepared their she-camel, by tightening its saddle, etc., and both of them, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and Safiya, mounted it. Then all of them proceeded and when they approached near Medina, or saw Medina, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What means, we are coming back, to Medina, with repentance, worshipping, our Lord, and celebrating his, our Lord's, praises.
The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, continued repeating these words till he entered the city of Medina. Hadith 210 Narrated Jabir, a boy was born for a man among us, and the man named him Al Qasim. We said to him, We will not call you Abul Qasim, nor will we respect you for that. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was informed about that and he said, Name your son Abdur Rahman. Hadith 211 Narrated Jabir, a man among us begot a boy whom he named Al Qasim. The people said, We will not call him, that is, the father, by that kunya, Abul Qasim, till we ask the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, about it. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Name yourselves by my name, but do not call, yourselves, by my kunya. Hadith 212 Narrated Abu Hurairah, Abul Qasim, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Name yourselves by my name, but do not call yourselves by my kunya. Hadith 213 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, a man among us begot a boy whom he named Ul Qasim. The people said, to him, We will not call you Abul Qasim, nor will we please you by calling you so. The man came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and mentioned that to him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, Name your son Abdur Rahman. Hadith 214 Narrated Al Musayyab, that his father, Husn bin Wahab, went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Husn. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You are Sahal. Husn said, I will not change the name with which my father has named me. Ibn al Musayyab added, We have had roughness, in character, ever since. Narrated al Musayyab, on the authority of his father similarly as above. Hadith 215 Narrated Sahal, when al Mundir bin Abu Usaid was born, he was brought to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who placed him on his thigh. While Abu Usaid was sitting there, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was busy with something in his hands so Abu Usaid told someone to take his son from the thigh of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, finished his job, with which he was busy, he said, Where is the boy? Abu Usaid replied, We have sent him home. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What is his name? Abu Usaid said, His name is, so and so. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No, his name is Al Mundir. So he called him Al Mundir from that day. Hadith 216 Narrated Abu Hurairah, Zainab's original name was Bara, but it was said, By that she is giving herself the prestige of piety. So the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, changed her name to Zainab. Hadith 217 Narrated Sa'id bin al Musayyab that when his grandfather Hazn visited the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, to him, What is your name? He said, My name is Hazn. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, But you are Sahal. He said, I will not change my name with which my father named me. Ibn al Musayyab added, So we have had roughness, in character, ever since. Hadith 218 Narrated Ismail, I asked Ibn Abi Awfa, Did you see Ibrahim, the son of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him? He said, Yes, but he died in his early childhood. Had there been a Prophet after Muhammad then his son would have lived, but there is no Prophet after him. Hadith 219 Narrated al Bara when Ibrahim, the son of the Prophet, died, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, There is a wet nurse for him in paradise. Hadith 220 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Name yourselves after me, 
by my name, but do not call, yourselves, by my kunya, for I am ul Qasim, distributor, and I distribute among you Allah's blessings. This narration has also come on the authority of Anas that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said so. Hadith 221 Narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Name yourselves after me, by my name, but do not call yourselves by my kunya, and whoever sees me in a dream, he surely sees me, for Satan cannot impersonate me, appear in my figure. And whoever intentionally ascribes something to me falsely, he will surely take his place in the hell, fire. Hadith 222 Narrated Abu Musa, I got a son and I took him to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who named him Ibrahim, and put in his mouth the juice of a date fruit, which he himself had chewed, and invoked for Allah's blessing upon him, and then gave him back to me. He was the eldest son of Abu Musa. Hadith 223 Narrated al mugira bin Shu'aba, solar eclipse occurred on the day of Ibrahim's death, the Prophet's son. Hadith 224 Narrated Abu Huraira, when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, once, raised his head after bowing, in the Salat, prayer, he said, O Allah, Save Ul Walid bin Ul Walid and Salama bin Hisham and Ayyash bin Abu Rabia and the helpless weak believers of Makkah. O Allah, be hard on the tribe of Mudar. O Allah, send on them famine drought, years like the famine drought, years of the Prophet Yusuf Joseph. Hadith 225. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Allah's messenger peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Aisha. This is Gabriel sending his greetings to you. I said, Peace and Allah's mercy be on him. Aisha added, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to see things which we used not to see. Hadith 226 Narrated on us, once Um Sulaim was, with the women who were, in charge of the luggage on a journey, and Un the slave of the Prophet, was driving their camels, very fast. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Anjusha. Drive slowly, the camels, with the glass vessels, that is, ladies. Hadith 227 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was the best of all the people in character. I had a brother called Abu Umar, who I think had been newly weaned. Whenever he, that child, was brought to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say, O oh Abu Umar! What did Ul Nugair, Nightingale, do? It was a nightingale with which he used to play. Sometimes the time of the prayer became due while he, the Prophet, was in our house. He would order that the carpet underneath him be swept and sprayed with water, and then he would stand up, for the prayer, and we would line up behind him, and he would lead us in prayer. Hadith 228 Narrated Sahul bin Sa'ad, the most beloved names to Ali was Abu Tarab, and he used to be pleased when we called him by it, for none named him Abu Tarab, for the first time, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Once Ali got angry with, his wife, Fatima and went out, of his house, and slept near a wall in the mosque. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came searching for him, and someone said, He is there, lying near the wall. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came to him while his, Ali's, back was covered with dust. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, started removing the dust from his back, saying, Get up, O Abu Tarab. Hadith 229 Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The most awful name in Allah's sight on the day of resurrection will be, that of, a man calling himself Malik ul Amlak, the King of Kings. Hadith 230 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The most awful, meanest, name in Allah's sight. Sufyan said more than once, 
the most awful, meanest, name in Allah's sight is, that of, a man calling himself king of kings. Sufyan said, somebody else, that is, other than Abu Az-Zanad, a sub-narrator, says, what is meant by, the king of kings is, Shahan Shah. Hadith 231 Narrated Usama bin Zaid, that Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rode over a donkey covered with a fadakiya, velvet sheet, and Usama was riding behind him. He was visiting Sa'ad bin Ubada, who was sick, in the dwelling place of Bani ul Harith bin ul Khazraj, and this incident happened before the Battle of Badr. They proceeded till they passed by a gathering in which Abdullah bin Ubayy bin Salul was present, and that was before Abdullah bin Ubayy embraced Islam. In that gathering there were Muslims, pagan idolaters and Jews, and among the Muslims there was Abdullah bin Rawaha. When a cloud of dust raised by, the movement of, the animal covered that gathering, Abdullah bin Ubayy covered his nose with his garment and said, Do not cover us with dust. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, greeted them, stopped, dismounted and invited them to Allah, that is, to embrace Islam, and recited to them the Holy Quran. On that, Abdullah bin Ubayy bin Salul said to him, O man! There is nothing better than what you say, if it is the truth. So do not trouble us with it in our gatherings, but if somebody comes to you, you can preach to him. On that, Abdullah bin Rawaha said, Yes, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Call on us in our gathering, for we love that. So the Muslims, the pagans, and the Jews started abusing one another till they were about to fight with one another. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, kept on quietening them till all of them became quiet, and then Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rode his animal and proceeded till he entered upon Sa'ad bin Ubadah. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Sa'ad! Didn't you hear what Abu Hubab said, meaning Abdullah bin Ubayy? He said so and so. Sa'ad bin Ubadah said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Let my father be sacrificed for you. Excuse and forgive him, for by him who revealed to you the book, Allah sent the truth which was revealed to you at the time when the people of this town had decided to crown him, Abdullah bin Ubayy, as their ruler. So when Allah had prevented that with the truth he had given you, he was choked by that, and that caused him to behave in such an impolite manner which you had noticed. So Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, excused him. It was the custom of, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions to excuse the pagans and the people of the scripture, Christians and Jews, as Allah ordered them, and they used to be patient when annoyed, by them. Allah said, You shall certainly hear much that will grieve you from those who received the scripture before you, and from the pagans, Surah 3, Ayah 186. He also said, Many of the people of the scripture wish that if they could turn you away as disbelievers after you have believed. Surah 2, Ayah 109 So Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to apply what Allah had ordered him by excusing them till he was allowed to fight against them. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, had fought the battle of Badr and Allah killed whomever he killed among the chiefs of the infidels and the nobles of Quraysh, and Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions had returned with victory and booty, bringing with them some of the chiefs of the infidels and the nobles of the Quraysh as captives. Abdullah bin Ubayy bin Salul and the pagan idolaters who were with him, said, This matter, Islam, has now brought out its face, triumphed, so give Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, the Pledge of Allegiance, for embracing Islam. Then they became Muslims. Hadith 232 Narrated Abdullah bin ul Harith bin Nawfal, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Did you benefit Abu Talib with anything, as he used to protect and take care of you and used to become angry for you? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Yes, he is in a shallow place of fire. 
Were it not for me, he would have been in the bottommost depth of the fire. Hadith 233 Narrated on us bin Malik, once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was on one of his journeys, and the driver of the camel started chanting, to let the camels go fast. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, Take care, drive slowly with the glass vessels, O Anjashah. Waihaka, may Allah be merciful to you. Hadith 234 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was on a journey and a slave named Anjashah was chanting, singing, for the camels to let them go fast, while driving. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Anjusha, drive slowly, the camels, with the glass vessels. Abu Kalaba said, by the glass vessels he meant the women, riding the camels. Hadith 235 Narrated on us bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had a Had, a camel driver, called Anjusha, and he had a nice voice. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, Drive, slowly, O Anjusha. Do not break the glass vessels. And Katada said, By vessels, he meant the weak women. Hadith 236 Narrated on us bin Malik, there was a state of fear in Medina. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rode a horse belonging to Abu Tulha, in order to see the matter. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, We could not see anything, and we found that horse like a sea, fast in speed. Hadith 237 Narrated Aisha, some people asked Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, about the foretellers. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said to them, They are nothing, that is, liars. The people said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Sometimes they tell something which comes out to be true. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, That word which comes to be true is what a jinn snatches away by stealing and then pours it in the ear of his foreteller with a sound similar to the cackle of a hen, and then they add to it one hundred lies. Hadith 238 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, that he heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, Then there was a pause in the revelation of the divine inspiration to me. Then while I was walking, all of a sudden I heard a voice from the sky, and I raised my sight towards the sky and saw the same angel who had visited me in the cave of Hira, sitting on a chair between the sky and the earth. Hadith 239 Narrated Ibn Abbas once I stayed overnight at the house of Maimuna and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was there with her. When it was the last third of the night, or some part of the night, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, got up looking towards the sky and recited, Verily. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of night and day, there are indeed signs for men of understanding. Surah 3, Ayah 190 Hadith 240 Narrated Abu Musa, that he was in the company of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in one of the gardens of Medina and in the hand of the Prophet there was a stick, and he was striking, slowly, the water and the mud with it. A man came, at the gate of the garden, and asked permission to enter. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Open the gate for him and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise. I went, and behold. It was Abu Bakr. So I opened the gate for him and informed him of the glad tidings of entering paradise. Then another man came and asked permission to enter. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Open the gate for him and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise. Behold! It was Umar. So I opened the gate for him and gave him the glad tidings of entering paradise. Then another man came and asked permission to enter. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was sitting in a leaning posture, so he sat up and said, Open the gate for him and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise with a calamity which will befall him or which will take place. 
I went, and behold. It was Uthman. So I opened the gate for him and gave him the glad tidings of entering paradise and also informed him of what the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had said, about a calamity. Uthman said, Allah alone whose help I seek, against that calamity. Hadith 241 Narrated Ali, we were with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in a funeral procession, and he started scraping the ground with a small stick and said, There is none amongst you but has been assigned a place, either, in paradise and, or, in the hell fire. The people said, to him, should we not depend upon it? He said, Carry on doing, good, deeds, for everybody will find easy such deeds as will lead him to his destined place. He then recited, As for him who gives, in charity, and keeps his duty to Allah. Surah 92, Ayah 5 Hadith 242 Narrated Um Salama, One night, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, woke up and said, Subhan Allah. How many treasures have been, disclosed, sent down? And how many afflictions have been descended? Who will go and wake the sleeping lady occupants up of these dwellings, for praying? He meant by this his wives. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, added, A well-dressed soul, person, in this world may be naked in the hereafter. Umar said, I ask the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, have you divorced your wives? He said, No. I said, Allahu Akbar. Hadith 243 Narrated Safiyah bint Huyai, the wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, that she went to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, while he was in Iyadikaf, staying in the mosque, during the last ten nights of the month of Ramadan. She spoke to him for an hour, a while, at night and then she got up to return home. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, got up to accompany her, and when they reached the gate of the mosque opposite the dwelling place of Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, two Ansari men passed by, and greeting Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, they quickly went ahead. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said to them, Do not be in a hurry. She is Safiyah, the daughter of Huyai. They said, Subhan Allah. O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, how dare we suspect you? That was a great thing for both of them. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, then said, Satan runs in the body of Adam's son, that is, man, as his blood circulates in it, and I was afraid that he, Satan, might insert an evil thought in your hearts. Hadith 244 Narrated Abdullah bin Mughaffal ul Muzani, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, forbade the throwing of stones, with the thumb and the index or middle finger, and said, It neither hunts a game nor kills, or hurts, an enemy, but it gouges out an eye or breaks a tooth. Hadith 245 Narrated Anas bin Malik, two men sneezed before the Prophet. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to one of them, May Allah bestow his mercy on you, but he did not say that to the other. On being asked, why, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, that one praised Allah, at the time of sneezing, while the other did not praise Allah. Hadith 246 Narrated al bara the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered us to do seven, things, and forbade us from seven, other things. He ordered us to pay a visit to the sick, to follow funeral possessions, to say, May Allah be merciful to you, to a sneezer, if he says, Praise be to Allah, to accept invitation, invitation to a wedding banquet, to return greetings, to help the oppressed, and to help others to fulfill their oaths, provided it was not sinful. And he forbade us from seven, things, to wear golden rings or golden bangles, to wear silk, cloth, debaj, sundus and mayathir. Hadith 247 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah likes sneezing and dislikes yawning, so if someone sneezes and then praises Allah, 
then it is obligatory on every Muslim who heard him, to say, May Allah be merciful to you, your Hamuk Allah. But as regards yawning, it is from Satan, so one must try one's best to stop it, if one says, Ha, when yawning, Satan will laugh at him. Hadith 248 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If any one of you sneezes, he should say, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, and his, Muslim, brother or companion should say to him, Yerhamuk Allah, may Allah bestow his mercy on you. When the latter says, Yerhamuk Allah, the former should say, Yahdikumullah wa yuslih balakum, may Allah give you guidance and improve your condition. Hadith 249 Narrated on us, two men sneezed before the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he said tush meat to one of them, while he did not say tush meat to the other. So that man said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. You said tush meat to that fellow but you did not say tush meat to me. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, That man praised Allah, but you did not praise Allah. Hadith 250 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah loves sneezing but dislikes yawning, so if any one of you sneezes and then praises Allah, every Muslim who hears him, praising Allah, has to say tush meat to him. But as regards yawning, it is from Satan, so if one of you yawns, he should try his best to stop it, for when any one of you yawns, Satan laughs at him.